Hi, my name's Doug Lyon. I'm a media lecturer at Brighton University. Uh, so, could you define vocationalism? Okay, so voca vocationalism means something different, and this is my personal opinion. Vocationalism means something different now to when I was a media student. I was class of 88, so I did my media degree between 88 and 92. And in 93, the polytechnics were changed to new universities, and there was a change in the way that vocationalism was perceived. So before that, polytechnics were vocational education, kind of an extension of further education, which is now like sort of B Tech, H and D kind of zone. Um, media studies in the olden days was considered a vocational course, which is kind of what we've got at the centre of our media degree is a strand. Slammy door. Uh, so, <laughs> um, like the placement is a vocational aspect of our course. What you're doing now, arguably, is a vocational aspect of it. Is you're learning a technique that you could go into a job and say, "Yes, I can do. I can do that thing." Once you start getting into postmodern theory or cultural theory or um, something that seems a bit less obvious about um, how it applies to a, a job, slam door, um, like that's an example. Media students who aren't aware, even though I've just said it, that the door slamming when somebody's recording, I mean that's a vocational thing. It's really simple, just be aware of that. Like, well, obviously can't train my lot to do that, even though I've just said it to them. And they're recording themselves. I mean, that sounds like a ridiculous example, but that is an example of a detail that somebody slams the door in the middle of your recording, then you've got an edit problem. Anyway, Thatcher came in, changed the polytechnics to universities, and then vocationalism became a word that we weren't allowed to say in education for quite a long time until recently. And now it's come back again, and now we've got to show that we are getting students' jobs. So vocationalism has come back as an imperative from above, except that what it used to be was a much looser term about being useful in a, in a work position. And now, this is my personal point of view, it's corporate vocationalism. It's, it's if you do this, this and this, you'll get a nice job with Barclays kind of vocationalism. Well, that's a very different kind of thing, I think. So, I think it's good that it's come back, that we should be evidencing that we're getting somebody, helping people get a job, but it's complicated because if you go and read history at Sussex, you're not gonna become a historian. If you go and read English literature, you're not gonna become a poet things aren't quite as literal as that so it's complicated okay. uh, how do you value success how do I value success is another going to be another long answer to a short question because for me it's like I've got a group doing something about dating Success of a dating situation, allegedly, is that you meet somebody and then you enter into a relationship with them for a long time and that means that thing was successful. Whether you are happy or not in the relationship doesn't seem to be in the equation or, you know, what... So you could say, I went on a date, I met somebody, we were together for five years, that would be a success of the dating scenario. In the same way that if you do a media degree, Six months later, you're working on a film TV crew. Arguably, that would be success. Whether you're happy in that, or fulfilled in that, or you feel respected, or you feel a sense of progression, or that's integrated into your life, I think they're much more difficult, complicated questions. So, 
slam the door again. Edit, edit, edit. Untrainable rabble. Um, <laughs> you know, like, I, I, w I want to be happy in my life. I think most people do. I think that seems to be a general thing with human beings is that we want to be happy. But we don't really understand what makes up happiness. So what our media feeds us is like, if you've got lots of money, a pretty girly, and mates and a great social life, then that's kind of it. Or then maybe you want a family or, you know, property or that kind of thing. It feels like well, there's an equation that society says if one plus one plus one equals four and you get that, then you've got it. Let's see if they managed to not slam the door this time. Have I trained them? No. Why can't I train you to shut the door quietly? Even when I've said it to you and you know I'm recording. So, let me see if I can give you a soundbite version of this. Like for me personally, the test of whether I'm happy or not is the first thought I have when I wake up in the morning and the last thought I have before I go to sleep at night. If I wake up in the morning and I think, oh, I'm going to work today, great, I've got this to do and I've got that to do and oh, what am I going to do about it? If I start thinking about it like that, that's a good start to the day. If I wake up with a sinking feeling in my stomach of like dread, then I am definitely not happy. If I go to bed at night and I'm thinking, oh, I did this today and I did that today, and I think I, I think I did all right there, I think I helped somebody out, feel good about what I did, then that is a good going to sleep thought. If I go to sleep going, oh God, I hate the way that this happened and that's so-and-so and I can't be bothered with this and then I know I'm not happy. I mean, I think that's a simple test. So then what makes me feel like that is a whole set of circumstances around, I want to feel valued in my job. I want to feel useful in my job. I want to feel like doing what I do well pays my bills. I want to feel like I'm going somewhere in my life. I feel like I've got some kind of sense of progression. I like to feel like I've got people I can go and talk to about different things, different aspects of my job. And I am fortunate at this point in my life that I've got all of those things and I've not had them before, or some of those things have been missing, and I've been miserable. So now I really don't take that for granted, that that is something easy to get in life, I think it's quite hard. Okay. Um, and finally, what do you think university has to offer in 2014? Uh, what I think university's got to offer in 2014, I think it's pretty much the same thing as it always had. It's a mixture of learning a set of skills that are useful in different environments. It's learning how to work with yourself. So, like, say, for example, I'm, an, I'm quite an anxious person. I definitely learned something through university and through media production about I can channel that into useful things, I can, I, I can get ahead of what I need to think about with my anxiety in a way that's actually useful. Have I got the right leads? Have I charged up the battery? Have I thought, you know, all that kind of stupid stuff that one of those things not working and the whole thing doesn't work. So that's a useful anxiety. I didn't know that anxiety could be useful before. I just thought that was a debilitating thing. Um, or laziness, you know, being a bit of a lazy bum in my life at times. Something about deadlines and doing things on time and just doing it, just jump through the hoop on time. You have to learn that at university and clearly that's a useful thing for everything that you're ever going to do in life. But also how to self-manage. So you're doing a complicated project now where you're the director, the producer, the editor, the interviewer, the researcher. That's a lot of different roles, and it feels a bit overwhelming at times, but you are doing it, so you're learning a whole set of skills there that when you get out into the industry and somebody goes, uh, you know, you might be a runner, but if they say, can you go and talk to the producer about blah, 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 
you might not have the whole idea of what a producer does, but you've got a clue how to ask them the right question. Or, or if you don't know, you could ask them how to ask the right question as a producer because you've got enough of a sense of what they do. It's a starting point. If you have no idea what anybody's doing, it's very difficult to even ask the right question. Mm. So I think, you know, for me, and, and what I got from university and what I'm still working with now in my 23rd year of teaching is there's always something to learn. There's always something. How do I teach people something better? How do I work with this kit better? How can I improve on what I'm doing? I think there's always something and I think for me that's a, a sign of being happy and healthy is that I'm content with what I'm doing and I'm always still looking how to improve it as well. I was going to say how has vocationalism changed in the last 10 years? But then you've already asked, already asked. So, just say that again? How has vocationalism changed in the last 10 years? I read something about new. Vo there's new vocationalism. There's old vocationalism. So well, I think new vocationalism is corporate vocationalism. Yeah. I think it's very specifically training you to do a certain thing a certain in a certain way. way. Old-fashioned vocationalism was about training a set of transferable skills that was much more open. That that's only my perspective on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously. Yep. The other thing I'd say around the value of a degree, which is also part of your question. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the value of a degree is a little bit up for grabs at the moment because as we know, well, there's a march actually tomorrow in Brighton about a demonstration for a return to free education, which is not what you're getting because you're the first fee paying year, aren't you? First nine grand paying year. Yeah. So, most of your year, your peers are going to come out with a 30 to 40 grand debt, a small mortgage attached to your learning experience, which definitely does raise the question of, was it worth it? Is it worth it? We're not guaranteeing you a job. And that's a big price to pay for something that doesn't guarantee you a job. I think... I think it's changed the way people come to study a little bit now. It's like what I've noticed with the first years this year is they kind of want spoon, feed, spoon feeding more. They think they're paying for something, therefore they should just be given it. And that's a little bit of a problem because the thing is with vocationalism is it's like learning to ride a bike you can't teach somebody how to ride a bike you can you can give them some top tips but they've got to learn to ride the bike and then you can have a discussion about it afterwards if somebody says to me just give me riding bikeness you can't you can't do it and that's i feel like that's a problem at the moment that people feel like they're pay they're paying all this money so they should almost be given, like the Matrix thing where you just plug in the thing and you just yeah, download yeah, yeah, yeah. being a great media student or whatever. As amazing as that would be, it doesn't happen. But then I, I, think, I think you have to do it, I think you have to go through what you were describing earlier about, like, is it worth it? I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, I've got too much on, this is all too complicated. Part of me just wants to quit. Another part of me wants to carry on walking. My head's done in with it all. I think that is the juice. That is the essence of the value that you're getting is that feeling. Not now, but on the other side of it. Because self-esteem has to be earned. You can't be given self-esteem. You earn it. And feeling capable of doing certain difficult things in the media industry comes from doing what you're doing now. You have to do it. You have to go through feeling uncomfortable and sometimes messing up and, you know, feeling a bit out of your depth. So maybe one day you'll look back on this interview and go, yeah, I can see that's where it all started. Now I'm doing this five years later. That came from that point where I didn't quit. Felt like quitting, but I didn't. I carried on. There's your value.
Thank you. <laughs>